I just want to give you a little bit of information on Iraq. It was once known as the cradle of civilization. It was once known as a beacon to the world. It was once known as the trading hub between East and West. It was a place where people of all race, faith, creeds, ideas, and of different statutes were able to coexist together in a single space. But what I find today is that all that was once Iraq has disappeared. In fact, throughout the Middle East, much of their history, much of their culture has been eroded and destroyed. The Middle East is a resource-rich environment. And this seems to play into the hands of those at the very top. It's all well and good if you sit behind a desk planning out where your next business venture is going to be. But the reality is, and just like the reality for our politicians, is that they don't see the reality of war. I can give you some examples. For example, we are known as the PlayStation generation. We play our games, we play our war games, and on some of the games we see the infrared images of, say, a Predator or a Spectra gunship. Now, it's all well and good playing it on the game. It's not real. I used to work in the command vehicles, and we had a screen that looked just like it. It was exactly the same. The people controlling these were thousands of miles away. They were in charge of vehicles that could, that could utilize weaponry to bomb and cause destruction on an endless scale. There was no sound, no real images, just black and white. As soon as they released the bombs, all they saw was a puff of black smoke. But the reality is, when you see it on the ground, you hear it and you feel it. I remember one incident where I was looking at the vehicle and there was a crowd of around 30 people. Some were armed, some were not. But if anyone knows anything about the culture in Iraq, they used celebratory gunfire for many occasions. I did not know whether these people were innocent or not, or whether they committed any crime. But the bombs were dropped, and not one of them was left standing. This has been something that has happened time and time again. We use artillery, we use Spectre gunships, which is basically artillery cannons stuck to a plane that can just perpetually bombard a single area. There was one area of, ba of uh, Basra in the southwest that we gave around two, two weeks worth of warning that we were going to come in there. And we surrounded the city, the Americans came down, the Iraqi army came, some of you know it as the Battle of Basra. What essentially happened 
was that they basically <coughs> bombed it back to the Stone Age. There was nothing left. An entire district of a city left in ruins. How many people died? Nobody knows. We don't even know how many people died in Iraq alone. There's estimations between one and two million civilians. That's bigger than some of the cities. And that's bigger than some of the cities in this country. We talk about the loss of life in this country. We talk about the loss of life of soldiers. Why don't we talk about the loss of life of all the civilians as well? Don't they deserve the same level of respect? <laughs> to me, the human cost of war is a big subject. It's a big problem and a big issue. It is something that is seldom discussed. And I find it disgusting that that is so. There needs to be a much greater emphasis on talking openly about what has happened and what has gone on. We have become accustomed to using war as a means of solving a problem. But all I see is that war has simply created more problems. I see no justification for any war that has gone on since the Second World War. The Second World War was a very different story. But since then, I don't think the British Army has actually been out of war. I think someone once told me that there has only been one year in the last thousand years where a British soldier has not died in combat. But we all know that from every soldier that dies, it's often the case that around 10 civilians also died, who just happened to be there at the wrong place at the wrong time, caught up in a mess. Has anyone heard the terms buffer state? During the Cold War, Iraq and Iran were used as buffer states to fight each other. Iran being the buffer state of the Soviet Union and Iraq being the buffer state of the United States and its allies. It doesn't matter what side you're on. The fact is, what were they fighting for? What were those people fighting for? Why did they go to war? Everyone here needs to go back to history. Take a look at all the wars that we've been in. Take a look at it from a central point of view. It's very, very easy for the media in this country to bring home, like Ben was saying, about all this glory, all this heroism, heroic actions that were taking place. But to me, all I see is a failure in the political, and um, in the political process. We have a big, big problem in this country. We have five countries in the world that are seen as the great powers of the world. And when they talk to other countries, they have a tendency to look down on them. So basically, instead of talking to them on the same level and showing respect <coughs> on both sides, they look down on them and they tell them what to do. And if they don't conform to that, it is usually followed by a military presence. But we know the military today is getting smaller. 
but there is a huge increase in private security. And if things continue as they are, we will end up in a world where basically we are full of essentially Western-backed militia that are not held accountable in the same way that we are. They're not held accountable, just like the government. Albert Einstein once said, all that is necessary for evil to prevail is that good men stand and do nothing. To me, the occupation is about good men and women standing up to the tyranny that we've all lived under in this country and indeed most of the Western world. And to me, it needs to stop. It needs to end. Who are we to go to their country, their land, and tell them how to run their lives? And one more thing. We haven't forgotten about you, Tony Blair. We know what you did. We haven't forgotten.